In this video, we'll show you how to create reports in your sugar system. Let's go. Reports are what make CRM systems so powerful. They can take all of your data, no matter how difficult it looks in its raw form, and display it back to you in an easy to understand format. Usually this is complete with additional information such as trends and insights that would take a data analyst usually a lot longer to find. And Sugar CRM's product suite has excellent reporting capabilities. But like any software CRM, producing the reports that you need requires a little bit of time and precision to get looking how you want, as well as having a fairly steep learning curve. So to give you a head start in making all of the reports that you need, we'll show you how you can start creating reports like a pro in no time. Before we start, you need to make sure that permissions on your sugar system are set so that you can create them. If you're heading into the reports module and finding that you can't create a new one, or perhaps the button is grayed out, check with your system administrator to allow them for you. And if you're creating a report for others, you also need to make sure that they have access to the data that you've added in the report. So for example, if the team member has no access to opportunity data for an opportunity report, they won't see it. For this report, I want to gather together the overall sales for 2024 so that I can compare them against my progress in 2023. Let's get started. Okay, so here we are in Sugar. And first you want to go to the navigation bar, usually on the left, um, and you want to go to reports. And then in reports, you'll see the list view here. And if you head up to create, and when you're here, you'll be presented with a few options depending on the type of report that you're looking for, um, and there will be a description of each. For this video, we're gonna use a summation report with details as it presents a chart for a quick overview, as well as giving a, a data table to put more context to the information that it's providing. That said, we'd recommend that you go through each one in your own time. As reports don't alter data and can be deleted easily, you can recreate a report without fear that you'll change data by mistake. However, removing a report will also remove it from anyone using it in a dashboard. So take care not to remove other people's work. Click on summation report with details. It will ask you to choose the data from a module that you want to create a report about. As we're looking to bring together sales data from this year, the module that should show this accurately is opportunities as this is where deals one would be locked. So click on opportunities to load this module. From here, you'll see the report wizard. Now, this will look complicated if it's your first time here, but trust me, with practice, you'll master it in no time. Each section will include an explanation on what it will do. So if you're not sure what it is you're looking for, the eye icon will be your best friend here. We would recommend bringing up an opportunity record in your system as a reference for some of the fields. That said, this example is largely the same names that you're likely to find in your system. To begin with, you need to define the data that you're filtering. There are two key things we need here. First, we only want to see deals that we've won as only they count towards the actual revenue amount. So let's add this first. Make sure that the available fields shows opportunities. If it doesn't, click the opportunities folder in the related modules section. Then either scroll down to or type in the search bar one of sales stage or status. Click on it to add it as a filter. Make sure that this operator column is set to is so that the report can hone in on one stage and then set the stage or status to closed one. Second, we want a comparison between last year and this year so far. However, this is separate from the sales stage or status as we don't want to compare that to the dates. Therefore, click the add filter group option at the top right. Then in the new filter group, you want to go to your available fields and look for expected close date. We need two of these so that we can use the data to compare the year stats. So click on it to add two of them to the filter. The first one to this year and the second one to last year. 
Finally, we want to compare them rather than combine the data. So for filter 1.2, select the operator to be OR instead of AND. However, the overruling operator should stay as AND so that it merges both sets of filters. We're done here, so hit next in the top left. For the table of contents for the chart we're making, we want to make sure that it's showing deals by their date of closing. So for the define group by section, in the search field for opportunities, look for expected close date. You see different date options, but we want to see the year by split. So pick year expected close date. This is also now ready, so hit next. In choose display summaries, you want to see summaries of two things to help you make the report that you want. The two years you want to compare and the amount in sales to make your comparison. So for the summaries, first add year expected close date, although this may also auto populate. For the amount, you want a sum of all of the year's opportunity values. So search for total amount and then find the option for sum. If you work in your sugar with values excluding VAT or including VAT, pick the appropriate one. Once done, we'll hit next again. For choose display columns, this is all of the columns of information that you want the table of data to show. This will be down to how granular you want the information showing to be. For our report here, we want to see the name of the opportunity and client it was with for context to the deals, the amount each was worth, and the closed dates from earliest to latest. So let's add each one. You will want opportunity name to see which opportunity it was to start. However, if you type in name, you'll see that it won't have a field for it. This is where the related modules directory comes in. The client name isn't stored in the opportunities as this module explicitly contains deals at opportunity level. Typically, you would find your clients in accounts. So with the opportunities folder collapsed, click on accounts. The available field identifier will then show accounts and now it will look for fields available in your accounts module. As clients are stored in a name field here, if you now type in name, you will see it and you can add it as a display column. For the amount, you need to make sure that you're back to looking at the opportunities data. So click on the opportunities folder in related modules again to bring these fields back. Add the total amount field if you do hold data for both including and excluding VAT, you can also add both of these to see the amount in gross or net numbers specifically. Finally, add the expected close date field and we've got all that we need. However, if you want to add a custom label to the columns, you can. For this, we'll make it clear that the name field is the client. So let's change this to client. You can also add sorting. As we'd like to show opportunities from earliest to latest, we'll click the button for the expected close date and then choose ascending from the drop down that appears. You can add more sorting, but for now, we'll leave it like this. We're done here, so click next. The chart options is also down to how you want to see the data presented. There are a few types of chart to choose from here. Uh, for our report, we want to see a side-by-side -side visualization of 2023 to 2024. So let's make it a stacked vertical bar chart. The data series is comparing the amount over each year. So this will be the sum of the amount. If you've only got one set of data, this should show as the only option. Add a description to the chart if you want to, but you can name the report in the next section so you're free to leave this blank. Finally, the round numbers option will round all numbers that are six digits and above. So an example of this is that if a deal is worth £275,250, that will be expressed in the thousands amount, so 275000 If you have deals big enough for this, we'd recommend ticking this to keep things neat. However, it's up to you for this. For our example, we'll make sure this is checked. Then hit next to go to the final section, Report Details. Here you can input a name for the report. Assign the report to whoever you want here, though this will typically be you if it's a report you need. So make sure that this is showing as you. 
For teams, this will open up the report to be seen by whichever team you assign it here to. It's automatically assigned to your default team first, but they can be made accessible to different users of groups as required. If you click the show button next to primary, you can then add additional teams, which will give the members of that team visibility of your report. If you don't see the show option, press the plus icon to the left of the primary option. Likewise, clicking the minus symbol next to an existing team will remove it from the list and members of that team will no longer be able to view the report. However, if they are also a member of your current team, then they will still have access. Finally, the optional related modules asks if you want to show data even if additional module fields are blank. In relation to this report, we added a column to show the name of clients linked to our opportunities. Ticking this option, that if an opportunity is linked to an account record with no field name, it will still include this data in the report. It's highly unusual to get to this stage of an opportunity without an account name, as it's the name of your client. That said, it's not relevant in every report, so it's worth evaluating whether your report needs the optional data for it to make sense. For ours, we want all one deals, so we'll tick this. Now that everything is filled in, we're ready for our report. Click on Save and Run. This will then save the configuration to your Sugar system under the Reports module and run the report. It will then return with all the information requested in a chart and table with details. It includes all the details asked for in the configuration and will update dynamically with any new deals added over time. If you need to make adjustments, simply click this down arrow next to Refresh in the top right and choose Edit. You can then navigate to where you need to make a change with the sections at the top here, and then hit save and run when you're done. It will rerun the report with your changes intact. And that is how you make a report in Sugar. We hope that this gets you started on making the reports that you need in your Sugar system. But if you're still struggling with them, let us know in the comments or get in touch directly. We offer guided one-to-one -one training to walk you through your requirements. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.